Hi. It was 1989. My thoughts were short. My hair was long. Sorry, I'll uh, spare you my singing, but it's 1989 and you wanted to view a video signal from like a security camera out in the field or something like that. What did you use? Well, they didn't have LCDs back then, so you used this Sony watch cam video in and it uses one of these fantastic flat screen CRTs. You can see it actually curve inside like that and there's an electron gun right down in there we'll take a look and it actually uh project you took your video signal in and actually projected it onto that uh, curved phosphor screen and this was absolutely remarkable back in the day and i've done a separate video tearing down uh sony weren't the only ones to uh invent this uh flat screen crt technology sinclair did it as well and i've done an extensive uh tear down video of the sinclair one in it just ran on some AA batteries or a, an external uh video we've got uh power and uh volume here and it could display a video image and that was fantastic for 1989, it was absolutely remarkable. This one's actually made in 90, December 92. So that's probably towards the end of, I'm not sure the product lifetime, but I would be guessing that it was probably towards the end of the uh, usefulness of this sort of uh, flat screen CRT technology. But it's very interesting how they actually uh, designed and manufactured a CRT flat screen in something you could almost fit in a large pocket. Fantastic. And this particular one is not a consumer one. It was really designed for, uh, you know, plug-in because of the BNC connector and designed for like, uh, you know, CCTV installers and other types of, uh, you know, security type personnel for setting up systems and monitoring systems. Go along, plug in your BNC video from your security camera and view it on your little pocket monitor. Oh, state-of-the-art stuff in the late 80s. So although this thing might have uh, found its use in uh, with you know, field security uh, techs and things like that to, for doing remote monitoring, it's actually effectively a consumer uh, market item because Sony uh, got into the, well, wanted to get into the uh, home security market. So, you know, you buy your home security camera and then you can just um, you know, sit this thing on the wall or whatever and you can have your coax coming in. And there is a uh, version of this that doesn't have the uh, BNC um, input on it. So that was, uh, you know, that might have differentiated this one possibly for the uh, industrial type market and the other one uh, without the BNC for the home market, which I think, you know, they sold as a bundle and uh, it came with a little uh, black and white because this is a black and white only uh, system, little black and white uh, security camera for home security monitoring and things like that. But, you know, this one's very handy with the external BNC for uh, field uh, tech use. And it was made in Japan, all the best stuff's made in Japan. And it's the FDM 030, uh, drew 2.3 watts, you know, a, a bit of a power hog, but hey, this is like a full-on CRT television monitor. So thank you very much, Joe Hartley from Oregon for uh, sending this one in. And by the way, yes, it uses the evil center negative pin. Ugh. Yeah, but let's power it on and see if it still works. All I've got is a PAL generator, so fingers crossed. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Look at that, I've got my, there it is, well, no, that's my color bar generator. Of course, it's uh, black and white only, none of this color rubbish. The color bar pattern is the best. Oh, there's, uh, there's checkerboard, there you go. There's no, you know, it's a bit fuzzy wuzzy, but uh, no, like, mate, you know, the distortion's not too, not too bad at all. Check out the uh, crosshatch pattern there. We can see that the distortion's not too shabby. I mean, it's there, but geez, you know, not going to complain. Oh, look at that. <laughs> not going to complain too much about that. Geez, especially when you got a compact CRT in this sort of uh, form factor, because that's just brilliant. Whip this thing open. There were some tiny little uh, Phillips there. Make sure there's nothing attached to the bottom. And ta-da! Typical. We're in like Flynn. And typical Sony construction there. Oh, wow. That is not electrostatic. The Sinclair. I, I assume this one was electrostatic. Um, just like the Sinclair one. This is actually electromagnetic. 
entirely different. The, Sinc the Sinclair one, I think, is uh, a bit narrower than this one, but that's a full-on electromagnetic deflection CRT. Look at that. Wow, well, you know, if you can tell because of the uh, coil wires, whereas the uh, electrostatic ones would have uh, just plates either side of this, um, which then deflect the beam. There's your electron gun there. Electrons shoot out, and then it would deflect them that way, and then you'd have ones on the top and on the bottom, which would then deflect your beam that way and that way, and then you could sweep across the uh, screen, and you'd have to have a final one in, in there to actually do the deflection, uh, to actually do the bending. And I'm wondering if they've got like a final one up there, maybe just to do some bending, because there's no uh, lens in this. The Sinclair one used like a uh, Fresnel uh, lens in there. It actually uh, produced a smaller uh, image in the center like that, and then used a Fresnel lens to stretch the aspect ratio out. But this one, Sony's one, is just a, a magnetic CRT deflection. It's beautiful. Anyway, um, a typical Sony uh, construction of the time, double-sided load with the uh, surface mount uh, stuff on the bottom. These would all be uh, Sony parts if you go in and have a look. And yep, there you go, Sony. Sony, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out, but you can actually see, and if I explain these uh, large pads on the end, these are solder uh, thieving uh, pads, because this is all wave soldered. Um, all these components are glued down to the base of the board, and you might be able to see some glue oozing out of a couple of the components in there, so they glue them down first, yeah, there we go, and then they put uh, the whole thing through a uh, wave, so a bubbling wave uh, solder bath, and the direction of travel of the board, you need this extra large pad on the end to actually uh, catch, uh, to catch all the solder uh, coming off, so then it doesn't uh, short uh, pins or other uh, nearby pads, and that's called solder thieving. And you can see that uh, on that chip as well. Yeah, you can see the red glue under those parts there, very obvious. And the uh, way they've got away with the uh, double-sided board, these are all zero ohm jumper links. So they're jumping all over the place. Look how many of them there are. Wow. But that's how you get away with uh, so much density on a uh, double sided compact layout board like that. And the people who laid out these boards, they're just, you know, brilliant. It is a tough ask to lay out uh, one of these boards on double sided with double sided load like that. None of this modern uh, computer aided uh, rubbish. That, that's all, you know. Uh, tape-based uh, layout, all manually done. Beautiful. What's going on there? Because that's going off to the main board over here. So that's interesting. Not sure what's doing there. There's actually uh, nothing but a resistor on the underside of that. So what? They had to physically mount those inductors off the board? They couldn't fit them on the main board, so they had to mount them separately? Hmm... Okay, upon closer inspection here, take a look at this inductor. Um, they've added a magnet on the end of it. In this case, it's got like a number six or a number nine, and it, it's epoxied on the end, and it's actually offset to one side. So um, obviously the reason that they've done this is for some sort of uh, almost certainly geometry correction. Correction. This is probably uh, CRT uh, dependent or, you know, system uh, dependent. And they've probably adjusted this in combination with the CRT or the completed CRT assembly, maybe on an external jig, and then they've adjusted this and gone, right, this one matches this particular CRT to correct for the geometry need, and I'm not sure electrically how they're actually doing that. You'd have to do extensive uh, probing to see what's uh, going on there, but it seems like that's why they've done this external board so that they can match this to the particular CRT inside the unit. Not so sure what the second inductor uh, there is doing, but obviously that one has got some special magnet put on the end of it, or a ferrite, or a piece of uh, ferrite, or whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a magnet. It could be like a ferrite uh, on the end, and it's it, it it's I think it's offset there for a reason, or they could have different numbers with different uh, properties, for example, and maybe the offset is not, you know, a huge deal. Maybe someone was just sloppy assembling this one. But I think that's probably what it's doing there, 
is some sort of a CRT geometry corre correction for each one. I thought maybe they were doing it. You can actually see just above the board there, there's some black wheels, um, cogged wheels on the uh, CRT tube, and they seem to have been white epoxied uh, in place, and they're like a teeth-based one. So they may be, you know, that could be like a focus uh, type thing because that seems to be uh, too far back there, but they're adjustable and uh, uh, locked in place with that uh, white epoxy there. But that's very interesting. So they could be electrically adjusting the geometry of the CRT just to correct it. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's going to be near enough. It'd be interesting to have a play around with that um, to break off the epoxy. It'd, you know, you'd have to physically break it off and play around with that as um, the CRT is live and see that it actually makes a difference. If I, I, I might possibly do that on a second channel video. Anyway, that's fascinating. I'm just taking off a single screw there uh, because they're held in by, you just bend the plastic back a little bit and we can get, flip that board out Kind of, sort of. Oh, look at that. Fuse protection on the board there. And, oh, well, sorry. Oh, silly me, assume that was a double-sided board. It's actually a single-sided job. Had to save every uh, cent. Got quite a lot of uh, little carbon uh, trimmers in there. But, uh, oh, there, there's a Toshiba uh, chipset. JRC, Japan uh, Radio Corp. That'd be like the audio uh, driver and stuff like that. But, yeah, they're... <laughs> That's why they needed all those zero ohm links on the bottom and they've also got your regular uh, links on the top too to get that layout on a single sided. That is extra, extra hard. Okay, now we can see the uh, meat of the action in the deflection system here. Look at these extra coils, one top and one bottom there, so that's to actually get the uh, uh, extra curvature that they need at the end to go on to the um, well, there it is. Oh, made in Japan. There you go. Oh, that's the part number for those playing along at home. That is a really uh, a remarkable assembly. I'm, I'm surprised that they can, you know, get that work in. But uh, they've engineered the magnetics uh, deflection system in this uh, well enough to, you know, make that work without a huge amount of distortion. You know, it's not perfect, but it's, it's more than good enough for, like, a compact, and it enables... A compact product like this otherwise it's not possible if you had that uh, screen it'd have to be you know twice or three times as thick if you had a regular uh, flat uh, CRT display in there anyway we've got some uh, high voltage uh, generation here and uh, there's not much else doing really check out the BNC coming over here none of this uh, coax rubbish just uh, just the flying lead going over. It's all pretty how you're doing, but uh, this was, you know, typical of uh, Sony Japanese uh, products uh, design back in the day. You know, now it's all, you know, computer-aided uh, design and everything else. You know, but back then they didn't think of, like, just, you know, anything of just doing, you know, messy point-to-point -point, uh, wiring like that. So, you know, it was just par for the course back in the day. But that is, there you go, that is remarkably... Remarkably simple, and I'm I'm stunned that this used a uh, CR a uh, magnetic deflection, um, which isn't nearly as interesting as the uh, Sinclair one. So I'll link in the uh, Sinclair uh, teardown at the end of this video because it uses a completely different deflection system, electrostatic uh, deflection versus this is basically just a CRT, but with just some extra uh, deflection on the end, perhaps. Um, that, you know, uh, could bend the uh, uh, beam, you know, right at the end um, as, as required for the geometry of that particular curved screen. But anyway, I'm sure there was a lot of engineering that went into that magnetic deflection. But once they nailed that, of course, then, well, it's just a, you know, it's just a Joe Bloggs uh, implementation of a video into a CRT driver, and that's it, um, you know, powered from... A couple of batteries. Now it doesn't look like there's actually anything past that like an extra anode or anything up the uh, top or any uh, any sort of you know grid mesh or anything anything doing there at the top side so I think that is the last we get right there so it must uh, 
must do the bending at that point. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, like, unless it's, like, gone internal to all the uh, plastic uh, molding or something like that, there's nothing further than that uh, coil at the end there and on the bottom side as well. And there we go. We can see the uh, glass plate on top, and that keeps the uh, vacuum seal inside, of course. So that's rather... It's all rather nifty. Look at that. Wow. wonder how they... Oh, did they... Yeah, they just stuck that glass on top as a last uh, process, but looks like that's all... That's all she wrote. Really? Hmm. Fascinating, though. Look at that. So, yep, that's confirmed. There's absolutely nothing further up. It doesn't have your traditional uh, anode uh, cap up the top there. But there you go. Hope you found that interesting. It's certainly fascinating what they had to do back in the day to enable a product like a portable portable monitor. We just take LCDs for granted these days. But back then, this was like the late 80s, even into the early 90s, this was still the way to do it. So there you go. If you had one of these uh, Sony watch cams, please let us uh, know. Or if you had one of the uh, Sinclair or other uh, flat screen, were there other? I think there might have been another manufacturer of uh, these flat screen CRT uh, technologies as well. But anyway, thank you very much, Joe, for sending that one in. That's absolutely fascinating look at a bit of retro consumer technology, which was just made obsolete once, uh, you know, LCDs and uh, digital uh, you know, stuff came along, but this was the only way to do it back then. Fantastic. Anyway, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up, because that always helps a lot. And as always, discuss in the comments or on the EUV blog forum. Catch you next time. And yes, it still works after I reassembled it, and it still works after 25 years. Winner, winner, chicken dinner.